So I decided to just double my vitamin D during this period of time to 10,000 a day. The vitamin D I use um, contains vitamin K1 and also K2, specifically the MK4 version. So there's a lot of controversy as to what's the best form of vitamin K to maximize bone healing, as well as to make sure that you decrease the potential that calcium might end up in the arteries. And it's very popular these days to recommend the M. So there's two versions of vitamin K2. There's MK4 and there's MK7. MK7 is very popular these days. It has a longer half-life, so therefore it's around longer in the bloodstream. This is often touted as a benefit, though we don't know that being around longer in the bloodstream is a benefit. After all, the key is that the vitamins get absorbed into the tissues like into the bones and the other organs that are involved in creating bone and not just circulating in the bloodstream. And the fact that it circulates longer in the bloodstream might reflect that it's not getting absorbed as well into the tissues. But MK7 has gotten a lot of the headlines. But the research on increasing bone formation Uh, is very strongly in support of the MK4 version of vitamin K. And in fact, in Japan, uh, a much higher dosage is used and is used as a prescription for osteoporosis. So in the United States, we commonly use 50 or 100 micrograms of vitamin K2. In Japan, the dosage that's been shown to be most effective is 45 milligrams. So that would be 45,000 micrograms, a much higher dosage. One of the major supplement companies um, offers a vitamin K2, MK4, in 45 milligrams in two capsules. So I switched to that. 